Father, I pray that you'd bless this message. I pray that you would lead us and guide us and direct us in all that we do today. Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise. And we thank you, Lord, and bless your holy name. Amen. I sent you email, uh, the notes for the scriptures that we're using today. So if you can get into your email at the same time as being on Zoom, you're encouraged to do that. That's for all the great techie people. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about evangelism today. And it's something that's not just for the evangelists, but it is for the body of Christ. And it's for all of us to share the good news, to share the hope that lies within us. So the title of today's message is Lifestyle Evangelism. That's right. <laughs> So when we were living in Menlo Park, we would take our son to this park that was nearby. It was kind of a short walk to Lyle Park. And I would pray, Lord, use us. Lord, send us to the people that are hungry. Yeah. Send us to the people that are open. Mm -hmm. And God answers those prayers. He likes those prayers. Mm -hmm. It says that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the world mm -hmm. to see whose heart is set on him. Mm -hmm. And it also says that if you seek the Lord with your whole heart, you will find him. Mm -hmm. He will be found by you. And so God is looking for the people that are looking for him. Amen. And God is going, you know, who's looking for me? Because I'm going to meet those people. I'm going to encounter those people. And then in Isaiah, Isaiah says, here am I, Lord, send me. Mm -hmm. Will you say that with me? Here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. Send me, send me. And so we're walking to this park in Menlo Park, and we're saying, Lord, use me. Use us. Lord, send us to the people that are open. I know that there are hungry people in Menlo Park. I know that there are hungry people in Florida. I know that there's hungry people in Redwood City. I know that there's hungry people right where you are today. There's hungry people in Maryland, near the Langards. There's hungry people in Texas and in Pittsburgh and wherever you are in Iowa. There's hungry people that need Jesus in your midst. Lord, connect us to those people. Use us today and connect us with those people. So there we are, after praying that prayer, there's a lady standing there with this giant German shepherd, and we go over and we start talking to her, and it turns out she's fighting cancer. She's got a severe <clears throat> cancer diagnosis. She's got this beautiful German shepherd. We have a German shepherd. We begin talking, we've got lots in common. And she lets us know about the cancer. We pray for her. She gets healed of cancer, comes to church, we end up being her dog sitter and uh, dog walkers and all kinds of stuff. Really great things happened in that relationship. She was looking for God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we prayed, so God brought her to the park at the same time as us. Mm -hmm. God brought her to our church, got, got her healed of cancer. When you pray prayers like that, God's all about that. Mm -hmm. God is all about that. He wants, he's trying to reach the lost. Mm -hmm. The Great Commission tells us to go and find the lost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's not for us to just go out there and argue with the lost. He says, go and, and heal the sick. Mm -hmm. Preach the gospel mm -hmm. and heal the sick. Mm -hmm. So what has he done? He's equipped us. Mm -hmm. He's equipped us mm -hmm. to do miracles and signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. So Scott's explaining this to a guy that works with him. And um, Scott's talking about raising people from the dead. The guy's like, yeah, I want to do that too. Lord, use me to raise people from the dead. Mm -hmm. Scott's like, yeah, you just have to ask. And, and God will give you opportunities. So the guy's in 7-Eleven, and there's a crash outside. And the guy runs out of the 7-Eleven, and a, the spouse, the other person who was in the car, says, she's dead, she's dead. She's lying there on the pavement. And the guy runs out of the 7-Eleven, goes and prays for him. And the lady gets, start, gets her breath back, begins to breathe. She comes back to life. Yeah. 
This happened locally. Yeah. This happened. This happened. This isn't some far away in far away lands. Mm -hmm. This happened in far away Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord use us. Mm -hmm. Lord use us. Mm -hmm. Here am I, Lord. Mm -hmm. Send me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here is Victory Church, Lord. Mm -hmm. Send us. Mm -hmm. Lord, it, we don't have to go uh, a million miles away to find the lost. Mm -hmm. The lost are right around us. Mm -hmm. The people that need God are right near us. Mm -hmm. And as we kind of move into latter days kinds of things and, and scary news comes up, people are saying, God, mm -hmm. you know, help us. Mm -hmm. Help us. Mm -hmm. Send us. Mm -hmm. Send us, Lord. He's equipped us and he sent us. Would you like to share something? Well, you've heard us tell the testimony of uh, when we at one point moved back to California, we were looking for a place to rent and I walked into a condo in Belmont and <clears throat> when I walked in, I knew in my spirit that I was there to witness to the person, but I wasn't with Brad, I was with someone else. And I knew I couldn't do it with the person I was with. Mm -hmm. And so I just walked through the condo and um, asked if it was, would be possible for me to bring bad, Brad back and come back again. And they said yes. And so we finished the tour, left, and then I said to Brad later, don't get excited about it. We're there to witness. Mm -hmm. We're not renting it. We're there to witness. And so we went back. She had to tell me that because it was beautiful. Well, it was yeah, a gorgeous car. Right. But I knew we weren't supposed to rent it, right? And so I did tell him that in advance. So anyway. Um, I still got excited. <laughs> still, I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so we walk in. When we walk in, I don't know how it came up, but something came up that, you know, anyway, we were Christians. And... Um, she shared with us and actually she started crying that because we I told her because I wanted to be straight with her is that I don't feel like we're supposed to rent your place but I feel like God sent me back here I saw it earlier but I was sent back here to pray for you what do you need and she starts crying and then she tells us that she was suicidal she prayed that God would send someone wow. to her because um, she was really seriously thinking you know bad thoughts and um, so she's crying and then we started praying for her and we said what do you really want well she really wanted to sell it it'd been on the market for a very long time and it hadn't sold and so I said okay we're not gonna pray that it's rented we're gonna pray that it sale sells and and so uh, faith rose up in brad's heart mm -hmm. and and he's like god's gonna give you like a double birthday present today so she wasn't saved even though she had thrown a prayer out to god for help um so we led her in a prayer of salvation she wanted to move back to san francisco with other family members and so we prayed for her salvation she receives christ and then we pray that the condo sells and when we finished the prayer, the phone rang. There was a realtor downstairs. Not only that, I actually prayed. I like praying this one. Multiple offers to push the price up. And so I prayed multiple offers, push the price up. And so we prayed that. Phone rings. It's a realtor downstairs that wants to show the condo. And so we p turn on more lights. We fluff up the pillows. <laughs> we go down the back staircase and the realtor brings somebody up the front staircase. She got two offers that night, sold the house or the condo the next day. Wow. So that was the faithfulness of God. But we prayed that we would be used by God, that we'd be led by God, that we'd be sent by God. And he sent us to someone that was hungry. And so because they were hungry and we asked to be used, it was a very easy encounter. It was easy to lead her to Christ. And we got great results when we prayed. So I think one of the things we're really getting today, as we, Brad and I, worked on this message together and we both prayed separately and, and I told him, I feel like we're supposed to do it on evangelism. That's what I got too. And so, so anyway, so we decided Yay. to try to team teach and 
which we don't usually do it this way. And so um, uh, both getting evangelism. And when we look at, at the accounts and the testimonies that we have that are the strongest of lifestyle evangelism, what we realized is that every time beforehand, we had diligently prayed that God would use us and send us. And so if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, that's a great testimony, but I don't have any like that. I don't have stuff like that happen. Then my guess is that you're not praying, asking for it. Even Brad, when he was doing real estate appraising, noticed, and he was going out Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays also, doing appraising, going into people's homes. When he would pray before he left the house, God use me today he would have some encounter with somebody that needed prayer that was very open to the gospel. And then he'd have days where he'd forget to pray it or just didn't get to it. And he'd notice that the impact wasn't as strong. So opportunities. They're just, there I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have an opportunity. Right. And so but this if is, I asked, there was, it was amazing how the person, uh, what the conversations went completely differently. Yeah. All I did was ask, Yes. And then I would get these conversations that would change totally differently. But if I didn't ask, then the people are all like, all right, are you done now? I got to leave. And, you know, everything would end. But if I asked, I would knock on the door and the person would come to the door. It's kind of tearful and emotional and needing help. Yeah, in the middle of a divorce. That's yeah. why they need the appraisal or whatever, right? And so he'd have great opportunity to witness. So... What we're realizing is that this is not a one-time request to God. This is like a daily submitting your life to his service. A daily uh, request to God to be used this day. Today, God, use me. Today, God, send me. There's a precious man named Andre that used to be in our church, loves to pray. What he did <clears throat> is he figured, I get so many calls from telemarketers, <clears throat> that he said fair is fair so he started leaving his voice recording um saying uh the gospel presentation basically he was leading people to christ on his answering machine okay this is back when you know the phones were in the home and so not just on the cell so he thought well it's fair if they're calling me to push their product they're at least going to have to hear the presentation of the gospel before they can get that out and so every time i'd call him just as a church member i'd have to go through the whole thing and listen to his salvation message being preached on his answering machine so there's a way to preach the gospel even without leaving the home go for the telemarketers then they're now you know attacking cell phones so even if you think, well, I'm housebound, I can't do that. Oh, there's a way. If you're willing to be used by God and you ask God to use you, he will find a way to lead people to you. It may be the UPS person. It may be the uh, uh, postal worker. It may be the lawnmower guy. I mean, you know, God will find a way. But let's go back to the main emphasis is lifestyle evangelism. But what we're finding is the need to put the request before God so that we're used on a daily basis. Okay. Not a once in a while, but every day. There's also something about that hunger to be used, the excitement, the expectation to be used. So even the prayer request then sets us up for that expectation. I'm now mindful of it. I'm thinking about it today, not yesterday when I prayed, but this morning when I prayed before I left the house to go to work or wherever, I'm asking God, now I'm ready. I'm positioned, I'm expecting, our faith level is elevated for the encounters. The right person in the right place at the right time. One more, then I'll go back to you. I remember, here I am, minding my own business, but I'm, I'm, I'm in Florida, and I went to the grocery store out here, you know, there you guys have Lucky and Safeway, here it's called Publix or Aldi's or whatever. So I'm in Publix, and I'm in the fruit section. And I pass a man, this was during COVID. And so I pass this man and when I pass him, I hear the Holy Spirit say, uh, uh, say something to me about him. And, and like, I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking, okay, how am I gonna, 
how am I going to get into this conversation? What am I going to say? What am I going to do? And so I, I know I have to go back. And so I go back and say, excuse me. And could I just, do you mind if I, if I spoke with you for a minute? No, yeah, go ahead. And so I, what I say is, um, you're called, uh, to witness the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, um, I don't think you've been doing it like you're supposed to do it. And he looks at me and his eyes get really big and he goes, I'm an evangelist. And since COVID, I've stopped doing it. I've stopped going out. Whoa. And, and, <laughs> um, and, and I said, yeah, well, when I passed you, the Lord spoke to me. So I just felt like I'm supposed to share this with you. All I was was like looking for fruit at the grocery store. Okay. So it was so right on. So bullseye. I was just available. So if we'll ask and we'll make ourselves available, um, you know, so he told me before our conversation was over, all right, because of COVID, I stopped, but I'm going to pick it back up. I'm going to find a way. And so I guess God wanted him back on track. COVID, no COVID. He wanted people hearing about Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I remember that, but I've forgotten that. So we uh, used to do regular evangelism as a church mm -hmm. and would go out to about once a month. And one time we took extra time to pray for divine connections. Mm -hmm. And I felt led that uh, I would, I felt good about the Kmart parking lot. Mm -hmm. The Kmart parking lot is kind of where I feel like it's gonna work. And other people felt like they were gonna go here, go there. Mm -hmm. So I just took, I think, one other person to the Kmart parking lot and then we were gonna meet other people where they went. Um, in downtown San Mateo. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking through the Kmart parking lot, and in those days we used tracks a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we still use uh, Pastor Gigi's You Are Love track. It's, it's still quite helpful. And um, I see some people in a van, and it's a late model, newer van, but they had the windows just cracked a little bit so they could breathe while they're just sitting there talking in the, in the van in the sun. And uh, I go up, and I put the track to the crack of the driver's <laughs> side window. <laughs> and the window kind of goes, and comes down. And I go, God bless you. And I just have a big smile. And they go, are you a Christian? I said, yes. yes. And uh, you are loved. And, Do you know about Jesus? I go, yeah. Do you know about speaking in tongues? I said, yeah. You're a pastor? Yeah. You're a pastor who speaks in tongues? Yeah. We're talking about speaking in tongues. Yeah. So Hallelujah. The, the daughter was in there in the car trying to convince her mom that uh, speaking in tongues was of God and that it's real and you want it. And Brad walks up wow. and puts a salvation track in there. Same time. You ended up getting in the car with them. I right? said, open the door. Let me, let me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes in. So they're in the Kmart parking lot. And I and, get in the back seat of the van. And he's witnessing. And we talk him. about tongues. Yep. Uh, and, and I think we got mom speaking in tongues. Because daughter was trying to get mom speaking in tongues. And I think mom was speaking in tongues by the time I got out of the van. Wow. Yeah. That was awesome. And then they joined the church. Yep. And they mm. were uh, faithful members of the church for about a year. Yeah. And, uh, and after about, about a year, she gets a diagnosis of cancer. On the bottom of the foot, which yeah. I didn't know that was even possible. We pray for anyway. her. The doctors change their diagnosis and say, no, it's just a war. Ah. Yeah. And, uh, they, they, yeah. We guess we were wrong because now we can't find it. So after praying for her, she was healed. Totally healed. The doctors just changed their diagnosis. Yeah. They told her to, to like get your affairs in yeah. order. You're gonna yeah. die. Yeah. This, yeah. You're, this is a cancer yeah. that is find 90, someone to take care of your kids. Fate, I mean, it was serious. Yeah, Eighty percent. Yeah. Uh, and she got fatal. totally healed. And then they're like, "Well, no, I guess we were wrong." <laughs> yeah. Right? They didn't know what else to make of it. Yeah. Right? Rather than say that your say. God healed you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was great story though. So we had a guy that was uh, part of our uh, home group when we were brand new Christians. And he was from Africa. And uh, Derek Kabanica, Mike, yeah. Mike Finley's here, and he, he knows that. And Mark, and Mark knows, knows him too. Yeah. So Derek goes back to Africa, and then he comes out for a visit, and he talks about his church, Kampala Pentecostal, in uh, Kampala, Uganda. Mm -hmm. And there are a cell group church. Mm -hmm. Very successful cell group church. Thousands mm -hmm. of people. Um, one of the biggest churches in Kampala. And it's all based on cell groups. Well, it's all really based on prayer. Yeah. And so they have a map 
of all of Camp Paula, and they have home groups in like every quadrant of the map except for this one big pie piece in kind of the upper left and there are no home groups in this one pie piece of the city map and so they the one of the home group leaders and one of the church leaders but he was a man of prayer mm -hmm. and this man of prayer goes i'm going to that area mm -hmm. and he starts walking that neighborhood and pray and pray and he just walks to and fro through that neighborhood mm -hmm. and today there are just as many red dots for cell groups in that quadrant of town as every other quadrant of town mm -hmm. i'm like wow what a testimony mm -hmm. so i start walking our neighborhood of kentfield commons in redwood city mm -hmm. and praying for a cell group mm -hmm. in kentfield commons mm -hmm. and i didn't know any christians mm -hmm. in that in that neighborhood mm -hmm. didn't know of one mm -hmm. but after about a couple months of walking and praying for a cell group we had a men's cell group mm -hmm. in that neighborhood not in our house in somebody Someone else's else. house yeah. and we had about 14 guys coming to um, a men's bible study we were using at that time tony dungy had written his book he had been the super bowl winning christian coach of whatever team it was tony dungy was buccaneers the coach. buccaneers okay mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote a book, and we used that book as um, the the text for the Bible study. And we mm -hmm. read that book as a as a men's group. It was a very successful group, and, and people liked going, and it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was really really fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's about prayer. Mm -hmm. So this prayer, here am I, Lord, send me. Yeah. And Lord, use me today. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pray that prayer with me right now. Lord, use me today. Lord, use me today. So there are the there is this use me today sec mm -hmm. a, a, a bit of evangelism, mm -hmm. but then there's also the specific person. Mm -hmm. There are specific people in your life and my life mm -hmm. that we're called to impact, mm -hmm. that we're supposed to reach. Mm -hmm. Lord, who are the people that I interact with on a semi-regular basis mm -hmm. that I need to pray for an opening, mm -hmm. pray for an opportunity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to witness to those people? Mm -hmm. I played tennis with this one individual for a long time, and I prayed, Lord, opportunity. Give me an opportunity. Give me an opportunity. And I prayed for quite a while for that opportunity, and finally it came and he had a pain that would jump from wrist to wrist and then it would jump on his arm and it would move around on his arm i said we have some experience with that <laughs> and we would like to pray for you yeah. and he said i have to take a drug that uh, costs a ton of money and i've got a great health care plan and stuff like that so i'm not paying for it but the actual medical bill for this drug that i'm taking to, to address this issue is ginormous yeah and i said we have dr jesus and uh, you know come over to our house dg and i will pray for you mm -hmm. he comes over to our house uh we pray for him and we also pray the salvation prayer mm -hmm. with him mm -hmm. have you ever mm -hmm. do you had did you ever as a point in time mm -hmm. invite jesus to be your lord and savior and his eyes kind of spin around and he says no i don't think i've ever mm -hmm. prayed that specific prayer he wasn't a church attender mm -hmm. but he was an anti Mm -hmm. And so he invites Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. We pray. The pain goes away. Mm -hmm. The pain stops coming. Uh, we say, devil, in the name of Jesus, you know, get away from him. And uh, we, we cast this issue out from him. Mm -hmm. I believe that it was kind of a deliverance issue. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have that pain for months afterwards. <clears throat> it's awesome. Pastor Jesus. So we are ambassadors come on representing christ on the earth in second corinthians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 i'll read it to you it says god was in christ reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and he has committed to us to who us to me us. to you to us the word of reconciliation 
How are they going to know if someone's not sent? How are they going to hear? Verse 20 says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. There's also another passage in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, that calls us again an ambassador. We're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Notice also in that 2 Corinthians passage that it says that God's not counting their sins against them. They've already been forgiven. So we don't have to lead somebody through a long list of confession when they uh, come to Christ. They've already been forgiven. We just have to get them to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. So they've been forgiven, but we've been given the word of reconciliation. We're the ones that know about Jesus that are to go out and share Jesus with the world. And as we pray, ask to be used by God. He will use us. He will lead us. And I think we're going to find it easier because he's going to lead us to the harvest that's right. I've done this without prayer, and it's not as easy. It doesn't go as well. I've been on airplanes with prayer when I pray for the person that's in the seat next to me, and I pray in advance. And I've done it where I don't necessarily pray for that flight. And when I pray, God, put me next to somebody you want me to witness to, you want me to share, Boy, we get great results. So I'm just bringing it back to this, you guys. If we want more fruit, we want better results, we need to be asking God on a daily basis to use us and send us. And he does say, um, uh, he does talk about the harvest and to beseech him to send laborers into the harvest. So let's ask him. God, send laborers into the harvest, and we're willing to go. We're willing to be sent. Doesn't mean he's going to send us to Africa necessarily. He may send you to Lucky, to Safeway, to Publix, wherever. But let's be open to tell people about Jesus so that we are ready and can give an account of the hope that is within us. 2 Timothy uh, 4.2 says, preach the word. This is to everybody. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is within you, yet with gentleness and reverence. We know that Jesus sent out the 12, then he sent out the 70, but he didn't stop there. He sent out all, right? Go into all the world and minister the gospel. He was not speaking to quote-unquote professional ministers. He's speaking to the ambassadors. We are all ambassadors. Whether you get your living from the gospel or not, we're all called to witness. We're all called to share the gospel. And then let's look at this, because when he did this, again, Brad talked about he didn't send us out without equipping us, that we are equipped. And we've been teaching on this. When Jesus sent the 12, um, this is Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. He gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Not some of them, every kind. And then if we go down in the chapter more, we can look at verse, say, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. It says, when you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Each one of us have freely received. He's calling us to give. In Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, again, we see the account of them sending out the twelve. He gave them power and authority over all the demons and to heal diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to, now listen to this, perform healing. It didn't right there say, ask God to heal. He equipped the disciples to perform healing. 
So he didn't just do that to the 12. He also did that um, also with the 70. And he did that when he sent all and said, go into the world and preach the gospel. Let's look at where he sends the 70. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 2. Now after this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two and two, or we could say two by two, ahead of him to every city and place where he was himself going to go, saying the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. We're ready, we're willing, we're able. In Luke 10, 7 to 9, I'll go down to the later part of that, and it says, uh, when you go to a house, if they receive you, heal those in it that are sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. When the 70 returned, they were all excited. They returned with joy because they said, even the demons were subject to them because Jesus had given them authority to heal, authority over unclean spirits. He said, go. Right before he was taken up to heaven, Jesus said, go. You're equipped. I know you're equipped because we've prayed for impartation for you guys. You're anointed to do this. You're equipped. You're anointed. You've been taught the word of God. You've received impartation. You've been taught how to minister healing. Let's pray that God sends us as laborers into the harvest on a daily basis. Lifestyle evangelism. Let's go get them healed and let's get them saved. Let's expect them to get healed when we lay hands on them. Let's expect good results. He said perform healing. How about that? Perform healing. Us. He wants to use us. I'm not so sure in all these years past in many, many churches that we've been taught accurately about the healing power of God. First of all, some churches don't even believe it. he's still healing people, but we believe he still heals. He's saying perform healing. Yeah. You're equipped. You're anointed. Let's go get the harvest. Mm -hmm. Reverend Todd White has a uh, slogan, Lifestyle Evangelism and Lifestyle Evangelism University in Texas. And he's got some great YouTube videos of him going out and doing street witnessing. And tremendous things happen. We have done almost the same things, personally, where we went on one of our first mission trips to Mexico, and we had morning prayer before we went out, and not many of us were really good uh, Spanish speakers. Mm -hmm. And so we would use uh, candy and tract, Spanish tract evangelism. And uh, we had really untrained people, it was, it was semi-trained people, and they had tremendous results. Mm -hmm. They were super led, they did the right things. They were, you know, if you feel led to give somebody a, a few pesos, do it. If mm -hmm. you feel led to give somebody a five, do it. Yeah. If you feel led to give whatever. Anyway, so people were going out there and then being led in their giving and what they did and what they handed out. Yeah. And we came back and it was like the 70 returned with joy. Yes. Our missions group came back to, to the van and came, went out to lunch that day yeah. with absolute 100% joy. Yeah. We were so excited and so happy at the interactions we had in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, that day and those days, uh, we had an absolute ball. Mm -hmm. uh, I, can see, I can still see Julie Paquette. She wore a pink hat that was probably it was like a sombrero. It was the biggest <laughs> pink hat you've ever seen. Yeah. And she, she just walked right down the dirt street of the yep. worst part of town yep. and with her ginormous pink, pink hat, hat. Pink handing, shirt. Her, handing out yeah. tracks mm -hmm. and handing yeah. out candy. Yep. And people flocked to her. Yeah. And, and yeah. So many people got saved that day. Yeah, uh, it was really fun. I went up to a machine gun nest of soldiers yep. with machine guns and started handing them candy and tracks, and they all just stopped, sat down, and read the tracks. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm you know walking up to them, and it's a little intimidating walking up to a guy in full mm -hmm. battle rattle, and yeah. he's got guns, you know, and they're looking at. 
But I have candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, we, we brought chocolate because, you know, in those areas where it's really, really hot, chocolate melts. So it's hard to keep something like that. So we had the chocolate in the air conditioned car so that it wouldn't melt. And then we'd take out small amounts and then we'd go street witnessing and then the car would follow us. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. it was Great. Good. Great. Worked really well. Those soldiers did. read the tracks and yeah. prayed the prayer. So even when awesome. we couldn't speak the language, it was still effective, right? We we're Amen. still leading them sure. to Christ. Amen. Yeah. Let's let's close with prayer yeah. and let's pray. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. Use me. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you would fill us with even more of your spirit yeah. for power evangelism. Yes that we would heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, yeah. freely we have received, freely, freely give, we and that we would share your gospel with power, mm -hmm. that we would share your love with power, mm -hmm. that we would share your forgiveness mm -hmm. and the good news mm -hmm. of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Help people to mm -hmm. see it as good news, receive it as good news, and help us to bring it as good news news yes. that it is yeah. in jesus name yeah. amen. amen amen so on june 2 we're going to have a water baptism for all the people that you guys in california get born again so invite them to june 2 get water baptized and we'll work on it out here where we are too right yeah, amen. yeah. so start start inviting and then ask god who comes to your mind when you say father who do you want me to witness to because there may be people you know of right now who do you want me to witness to? And then we want you to be mindful. And I'm going to do this too. Honestly, Brad is better at it than I am, but I will be good at it now. Amen. I am going to ask every day, God, use me. Use Amen. me today. Lead me and guide me today. Amen. To somebody that's ripe for the harvest. Yeah. Amen. Amen.